Welcome back to the Raise Up podcast. Hey, hey. I'm Athena. I'm and, Charlie. <laughs> and we're your hosts today. And we're here to just share some of our business knowledge. We bring guests in. We are doing this this life thing at work. And um, we're just, we're looking to bring some value to those who are looking to step into the entrepreneurial realm or who are uh, already there. So... Without further ado, Charlie, the topic today is stories in our business, and that is probably one of the fundamental pieces of building a culture, is the stories that are generated within our business. And whether we're running the narrative on those stories or we're allowing the team to run the narrative on those stories, it's like it means everything to your culture. So... One of the things that really came to mind was we were in our quarterly leadership meeting and we were talking about yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were talking about getting uh, compliance really in certain areas of the organization at a higher level. And when I'm talking about co compliance, I'm talking about just like we, we really require uh, the drivers, for instance, they have paperwork that they've got to do every single time they're on shift. But one topic that we got like centered around was notifying us of incidents that are happening yeah. and the lower that the we where we know as in a 24 hour organization with the amount of team members that we have here if we were adequately being given um the information that we need we're probably going to expect at least a dozen incident reports a day so let me explain what an incident is too. It's, it's something that just goes out of the ordinary. So yeah. it's like if we have an ordinary trip and um, we might be two limits late because there was an accident on C Street and that was our main pathway to get to the Sheraton Hotel, we would put an incident says that we were two minutes late because um, there was an accident on C Street and we had to divert and go down Gamble or somewhere else like that. Yeah. So it's anything that happens outside the norm of a regular trip. And... Um, so we, we expect those. And why we want those is if somebody called me and said, hey, we noticed that your driver is late or something happened, we could definitely say, well, you know, there was a big accident at C 15th and our direct routes are this way. So we had to re-divert and go that way, even though we try to be make sure we're on there on, on time. Also, another thing would be like if we go to a trip and we were supposed to pick up four people and only two people were there, uh, we'd make an incident report because if something ever came back and said, how come we didn't pick up the other two people, there would be documentation that shows that when we went there, there was only two captains that picked up instead of the other ones because the other ones were locals, but they had four on the flight list. So it, what it does is paint a picture for us to let us know because three weeks later when somebody asks you, hey, what happened with flight 61? You were like, well, I have no idea what that was three weeks ago. And you know, and time reporting sometimes for other companies are a little bit delayed. Yeah, so we, this gives we have us- have duties that we yeah. have to perform for our clients. So we, this gives us a good, clear picture of it. And so what we talked about yesterday is just really having those guys down, down and letting them know that an incident report doesn't mean disciplinary or anything else like that. It just gives us a clear picture. They're painting a picture of what happened at that time and day and why it happened, who it happened, what vehicle it happened in. And then it lets us be able to do reporting logs. Uh, like we could look on cameras if we needed to, to yeah. get something off it. Because we have a timestamp. Yes. And then our iPads have a time that we went to go get to the trip and that's So we can compile all that data. Plus it lets us know, uh, on top of this, it lets us know like our on-time trips, how we're doing, um, what we have for incidents. Like uh, we had a tire go out. We had a, a, a headlight went out in the middle of the ship. There's all the different reporting tools that we have that we want our, our team to be aware of. It lets us know how long we're supposed to keep a vehicle for, how much money we're putting into the vehicle. Yeah. I mean, all the reporting tools we have <coughs> are so important to the decisions we make of buying new vehicles or how much more money we're going to put back into this vehicle or do we have a same consistent flight that's having a problem. So if we see this flight's having a problem, then we probably shouldn't count on this driver to do it. We should probably have put a second person on to take care of this one. So it gives us a lot of data that we can use to make informative decisions. Yeah, and I think that that was a really great like summary of why it's important to us that incident reports are filled out. But what does the employee think about? What's the story the employee has about that incident report? So, you know, I... I, I and it's and it's interesting because it's not our story. Yeah, and so, you know, I, I think we, as employers, should be educating them a little bit more. And that's one of the discussions we had is let's go down to the basics. Let's break this down to the basics again and let them know as we have this massive growth of the last couple of years, I feel that we're, 
we're sometimes drinking out of a fire hose and we're giving our team the information. But, you know, as you've done at orientation, you've been in a class, you only absorb so much when you're doing on the duty jobs, you absorb more because you see more, you're doing it and you're, you know, you're not just in a classroom for four hours yeah. learning all of our cultures and handbooks and things like this. So um, what I told Athena and what I explained to the team is like, like I want to get back to the basics. I want to rip it all back down and rebuild it. And then we looked at some of our policies and procedures. We looked at some of our mechanical forms. We looked at some of the forms and said, you know, we built these two or three years ago and we're always trying to be inventive in what we're doing. Maybe we can reform some of these. So now we're just going to try to reform a few things that make more sense because talking to some of the management team, talking to some of the supervisors and hearing some of the feedback we're getting from staff. our chauffeurs, our staff, other things are going on. That's valuable information. Like we don't sit in the ivory tower that we look down on everybody and say, hey, what's going on? We want to be boots on the ground too and and realize that there's some things that we can change. So as we're getting back to the basics and I was explaining that to somebody yesterday is just really kind of getting back to it. Let's get down to our baseline again. And this is our shoulder month. Let's rebuild it. And so now as we look at November, December, Jan those are November, December, a massive months for us because cargo is so big. Uh, we have a lot of events going on. We have a lot of Christmas parties going on. We, this is a good time for us to revamp things. And then January is a little bit of a slower period too. It's another shoulder month. But then after that, February, March, April, May, and then shoot when May comes up, we're, we're all hands on deck. So great timing, great time to re-educate our employees. Uh, we had some even some intentional timing that we're going to do it. Like putting their first trip is going to be an hour up the top to, to have uh, Amy and her team do some videos, really get people dived into it. If somebody doesn't know how to fill out a report there, we're going to have them fill it out 10 or 15 times just to show them that this is a safe place for them. This is something we want them to do and they want us to be informative. It's no disciplinary actions. There's nothing like that. It's just them painting a picture for us. You know, and what came out of that quarterly meeting around the story around some of these reports that we absolutely need to understand the pulse of our business is what's the current story that the employees are telling themselves and what came out of that is I don't want to fill out an incident report because I don't want to get in trouble I don't want to be questioned I I want to stay invisible uh you know some of them these just kind didn't of... know the correct ways to fill them out too I mean like yeah that was there's a lot of fields too. that we saw that that were in there that we looked at really made sense when we were doing them but now we looked at them some of the fields don't make as much sense now like we don't have a GSA a lot or GSI a lot anymore we don't have some of the other things that we had so narrowing it down to make it more, more simple simple and easy where it's right on a task on their iPad and they can hit it or if it's a mechanical, they can hit it and say, yes, left headlights out. You know, making it simpler and easier for the employees to fill out, which will in turn to our mechanics, which will in turn to our supervisors, which will in turn to the management team, which will turn everything a little bit more easier. So if you're in your system and you've had the same systems forever and they work, well, they maybe work, but you can always make them work a little bit better. And I think that's one of the things that we were trying to get out of that yesterday. And, you know, and having a more of a clear head about what's going on with the company now that we've just had another massive season is like, okay, what can we do to be intentional to make it easier for our drivers? And if it just, if it makes it easier for our drivers and our chauffeurs, then it makes it easier for our supervisors and supervisors can get more stuff done. The managers can get more stuff done. Yes. And then we're not creating all the overtime. We're not creating all this hecticness in our life where it could have been just simpler and easier. Like, you know, one of our supervisors is like, well, they love to come to me because um, I'll help them fill it out. And I'm like, yeah, but are we helping them or are we hindering them? Because we should teach them how to fill it out because after two or three times of them taking your time away to do that, we could have probably spent that time in the very beginning and now they know how to fill it out every single time. And now it won't just be when you're on shift, they'll fill it out every single time when you're not here and you're here because 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, we never shut down. So we want them to have the tools to be able to operate the equipment correctly. They want the tools to be able to fill out the questionnaires correctly. Uh, so it just, I think, and the whole scheme of it, it's going to save us so much more time and hassles. And it's just, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it because I get to hear about these in the meetings and I'm like, oh, what are we doing here? You know, we, we just, we just need to take it down to the basics. Yeah. And you know, an, an interesting thing that you mentioned about tools is when that policy was written, some of those policies, we didn't have speech to text. We didn't yes. have some of these other tools. And so it's like, what are some of these tools that are available now, especially for our bilingual team yes. members who they don't feel they're as confident about filling out a form because they're going to have to write a description in the description box. Well, showing them 
hey, on our iPads, we have the option to, you know, voice, voice message that. Yeah, that was a big thing yesterday. You know, a lot of people were, uh, English is not their first language, but they speak great English. But um, maybe taking some words from one language to another one means a little bit differently. So um, giving them the option to be able to explain it on there, and then we can kind of read through the lines on some of the other stuff yeah. there. It, it was going to make it much easier. You know, we get some mechanics reports in, and they say the vehicle's broke. Well, that our mechanic is, what's broke? You know, I mean... There's so many different things involved into this, and it could be just something as easy as the windshield wiper flew was out, but they couldn't get to work. So they they deemed it out of service. I'm like, what do you mean it's out of service? Holy moly, you know, but trying to dig down on what it is, if we can make the form simpler and easier, then they feel like we're getting to the job fast enough. Our mechanics don't feel like they're wasting their time trying to, to figure out what's wrong with the vehicle. So they're driving around doing everything. They're so like, there's nothing out of service. And the next person goes, it's still not working. And I'm like, what's not working? He's like, well, the, there's no windshield wiper fluid. You gotta be kidding me. Well, right. we got a 55 gallon barrel of it and we five five gallon barrels in there. Let me show you where to pour it. You know, I mean, that's the things that we wanna, that will save us a ton of money, our, our instant reports. And then one of the other things we explained too in the meeting is if Athena is out driving and she notices something's wrong with it, she fills out one. And then when they turn it into the dispatcher or whatever said, hey, this vehicle's down, we make sure that they put an instant report too because somebody has brought it to their attention that this vehicle's down. So we have a redundancy on it. So like well, if one person doesn't fill it out 100% yeah. one way, at least we have a second person that went in behind it that said, hey, this vehicle was turned into me. It's outside their normal realm also. Well, and really that would just speak to the dispatcher and the, and the driver situation. There wouldn't probably be a situation where multiple forms would be filled out for the same issue by by different departments yeah, I'd rather have two of them do it than just nobody do it. You know, that's that's the thing getting back to the basics. Most of the it. time we'll have, oh, I thought you did it. No, I thought you did and it. And so that's what that the problem. redundancy is and that's, about. And that's why yes. we put the redundancy in there. Because even like when there is an accident or something else happens, the driver gets to tell his story. And then when the supervisor or manager goes out to it, they get to tell their story. Um, everybody sees the accident in a different way. And that's why we want all of the information we can Um Seven out, of, seven out of eight accidents are usually never our fault. So that's why we have camera systems. That's why we have all the documentation set there. So it's really important for us to document the scenes, everything else that we're doing. Um, and that's part of the incident report system. I mean, it's just the more clear of a picture that we can have, then we can paint it to our insurance companies and police officers, or anybody else that's wanting to inquire onto it. We have this great picture that we can go ahead and say, well, this person filled it out. And when did they fill it out? That same day or the next day? You know, yeah. I mean, it shows timestamps and everything that we do. You know, and so really it is, it's telling us a story. It's telling the leadership team a story of, of what's going on out in the field so that we can decide whether or not we need to make a, if it's an isolated situation or if we need to make a process or a policy change. And I think what, Leaving that meeting, we had um, people volunteer for a subcommittee, and I'm like, maybe we need to change the title of the form so that they understand that they're sharing their story to us, and this isn't something that they need to be concerned about getting in trouble over or because this is a story form. And so it's like, how can we really connect with the intention of this form? Does incidents say it? I'm like... It's up to them. They're going to bring us some ideas, but it's really, we want to give you guys a, a perspective of are some of the things that we're doing is the story around that particular item. Does it, is it, is it a positive one for, for starters? Does it compel people to want to get on board or, or is there something where there's no communication and you, and therefore they're making up stuff. And they have their own story that they've made up. I can't tell you, there has been some interesting stories that uh, that I have heard. I remember one dispatcher, she had this whole elaborate story about how our business started. And, and, and I heard her saying it one day to another employee. And I was like, where did you hear that from? Yeah, the story is rewritten. And uh, she's like, oh, um, I'm not sure. And I'm like, well, I can tell you that almost I don't know where that story came from, but that is not our story. Like we started with two limousines and a bus and, and she was like, oh, but it was this like, really, she made it up. 
like she pulled it right out of her ass. <laughs> well, and you know, some people just hear a story and then they elaborate on it and then all of a sudden the story gets a little bit differently. I, I, I was on a limo trip one day and I remember somebody came up and he says, hey, hey, my uncle owns that limousine company. I'm like, really? Who's your uncle? And he's like, uh, and he said, Brad and, uh, and Carl. And I'm like, oh, well, I, cause it was BAC and you said for Brent and Charlie. And I said, well, which one's Brad and which one's Carl? He goes, Brad's my uncle. And I said, well, great. I said, well, how long has he owned it for? It, it, like this whole story, he was going into it. And I'm like, well, I'm not Carl, but I'm Charlie and Brent's the other owner and I'm the owner. And he's like, oh, I'm just playing with you, you know? And it, it was just this whole story of them, you know, trying to, uh, pull one over on our drivers, you know, let me get in the back of the limo and things like this. And you, you hear these stories and it's, it's, it's funny. I mean, it's just, um, you know, and I think we've talked about the story in the very beginning of our podcast and how the company started and what yeah. we did and how we did this stuff. So it's, it's, it's pretty well documented and it's, and it's all the way back to 2000. It's 24 years ago, almost coming up on 25 now. So the story story is still very clear in my mind. I remember going down and picking up the two first. I remember. Yes, it's very clear. Yeah, it's very clear in my mind exactly how it happened and why we did and how we drove them back. And Athena helped us drive them back and uh, the headlights going out as we're going down the road, flickering on and off. I mean, it was just a, a very adventurous all the way from Las Vegas to, to Anchorage, Alaska. Yeah, it was a, it's, a, it's a great story. And if you guys want to hear it and you haven't checked in on the first few episodes that we had, that's where that story is at. And Really, the, the whole point of having this discussion today was just for you to check in and go, what, what stories are, am I allowing in my organization that I, I can see are happening because I don't maybe have compliance in this area or maybe um, we don't ever assume that our team members are in a space of like disobedience. We always lean on the perspective that we need to communicate better we clearly have not communicated well enough here in this area and we need to do it better. Or maybe there's something more missing because everybody usually wants to just do the right thing and do a good job. And um, so it, it is important for business leaders to get in front of the, the narrative. And if you're allowing stories to happen because you're so busy and you don't have time to deal with this or that, it's going to come back to bite you in the long run. Yeah, you want your story. You don't want somebody else's story. And you want the culture of your company to be part of that story. You know, um, belonging to some of our 2020 groups back in the day with Arthur and Kathy, um, one of the places that we went was Chick-fil-A. And that was pretty cool. When you were walking through, they had a, a literally a board that started from the very first Chick-fil-A. It's hard about... The timeline? The timeline. And, you know, it's something we've always talked about doing, and I would love to still do that, especially since we own our build, own building, that we can make a timeline because that told the story. I mean, I literally walked through the hallways and started from the very beginning, from when the owner started all the way to where they're at, to where their production facility was, where we're making new stuff. I mean, that was there. And I'm not a big history buff person, but like, that was cool to be able to walk down the path. And they had it all the way down the hallways, around the corner, all the way around. It was this massive area. Of course, you know, we're no size of Chip Play's um, store where they had their uh, corporate headquarters, but what a story to tell. And they had a small video and everything like that. And it's like, you know, we're coming to an organization now where we had 270 employees this last year. And like, there is a story to be told. And it's pretty cool because it started off with you guys getting two limos and a bus back in the day because we thought we could do it better than everybody else and it was just like it led into where we're at now and it's like you know it, it is it is uh it, it's a cool story because i like because i'm part of that story you know and you've been part of that story our team is part of that story so why not tell the right story and and, and the same thing is letting these people know that there is a process and procedure to everything like that and that is part of our story that's part of our timeline is how the company goes and as we're going down the line, we want your input. We want to know what's going on with the company. We want to know about any instances that are going on. That is part of our history of how we've gotten to where we're at. And that's how their story connects to our story. Yes. Is sharing. And so if you explain it, it's if you explain it like that and they understand that this is where your story intersects with ours, especially as we are continuing to raise up the team and the organization, then it's not an incident report that's like this evil, I'm telling on somebody or, I, or I'm notifying somebody of something. It's this, this different narrative. And um, it's, it's important to take time to look at that and see, wow, like it doesn't have to be hard. 
maybe we need to change the name instead of incident. Like maybe we make it more of a um, more of a higher energy word. Like it's just like you know, uh, I, you know, there's always ways that you can change the narrative and you can change the way it is. And sometimes it's just word and it is, and it changes the whole mindset for people. So yeah, and you, you know, we did incident, task that to the committee we did. to think about what could be a name that we could change that would get shift the shift them into that narrative and yeah. then what would be the description behind that yeah. so they're they're going to work on it and present something to us next week yeah we're looking forward to it yeah, yeah well cool. we'd love to hear your guys' stories so by all means send us your story like our or share our our youtube facebook or instagram posts we're here to encourage and to just get you thinking on things that maybe you don't um, always think about on your own, especially if you're running and gunning in your season of busyness. So, You know, um, some of the things to think about, too, is if you guys have some questions or something we might be able to help you with, you're more than welcome to ask it. And if uh, it's something um, if that's big enough that we think that would be helpful for everybody, we don't mind answering the questions, but we can actually do a whole podcast on it, too. I mean, there's Absolutely. a lot of different things that people have come up to us and, and then we're actually getting... Uh, Facebook messages now and saying, hey, this has really inspired me. I have this company. I'm doing this. Would you be willing to talk to me? And that was the whole purpose of this thing is telling our story too. So it's it's our timeline and our story to what to tell about what's going on with us and then to help other people. Like I yeah. said, there was plenty of people that walked us through our journey and then you know, we just feel compelled and we feel like we really want to be part of that story for somebody else. And I've seen it so many of our employees. You know, We were talking earlier about our employees. It's like, when we let them go or they or they they they're going to their new things it's so funny how many people have left and come back and yes. and not it's like hey i have this great opportunity i'm gonna go do this and then they're over there for a year and it's like oh, oh no. this it wasn't, just wasn't the thing their energy wasn't there there wasn't things so just remember um as we talked about in one of our earlier podcasts is that it doesn't mean they're gone forever it, they're always part of our our bac family our amt family they're just more too. But they're part of our story. And then when they come back, it's even a better story because it's like they realize they went somewhere because they thought something was going to really be uh, great for them. But then sometimes they really came back and just said, I just didn't feel it. You know, I just wasn't the energy was there. And that's the really cool part because when they join our team, it's, it's, it's getting them in the culture and everything else like that. But for them to come back to our team after they left somewhere else and saw the culture wasn't there that's even better. And what we want to teach you guys is the culture. And this is yeah. part of the culture is getting your team to have the buy-ins, to be able to do the insert reports, to be able to say, hey, you know, have you guys thought about this? Because as we are not boots on the ground, as we're out there driving every single day like them are, they might have some viable tools for you that you can do. And, and really realizing that has uh, been good. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah. So share, you... like us, Instagram, Facebook. RaiseUpMindset.com. Go. Look forward to seeing you guys. Bye. Thanks again for joining us on the Raise Up podcast. You can find us at RaiseUpMindset.com. Our socials link there so you can get anything that you need from Instagram, Facebook, our shorts. You can download the podcast straight from the website. If you're listening on another platform, please like, subscribe, share. We're just getting the word out on really the encouragement and um, propelling the entrepreneurial movement in our communities. Thanks again for listening. We've got something special at the end of our episodes now where it's called the Raise Up Response. This is just a sheet that if you want to dive deeper, it's got questions, it's got takeaways from the podcast. Click the link below and you can request it. It'll take you to our website and find it in your inbox. Thanks again. Bye-bye.